Yeah. We'll start recording. church and it's good to see you as always <clears throat> your smiling faces um, little girl got to go to her first wedding and she whispered to her mother why does the why does the bride have white on <clears throat> mother said oh that's because white is, is re represents happiness and this is the happiest day of her life. And a little while later, a little girl said, Mom, but then why does the groom have black on? <laughs> <clears throat> After Adam and Eve had children, the children were asking them, um, why don't we live in the Garden of Eden anymore? And Adam said, because your mother ate us out of house and home. <laughs> and lastly, what kind of man was Boaz before he married Ruth? Single. <laughs> Ruth, Ruth, ruthless. Okay, good, good beginning. Uh, all right, let's, let's have a word prayer together. We commit this service to you, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. And we thank you for the fact that you do love us. And you want us to come to you and seek and ask and knock. And that you're interested in our lives and our needs. Lord, we want to be asking for the right things. Because we know that's glorifying you and good for us. And uh, we ask for your wisdom, because we need it. And uh, we submit to your kind, loving purposes. We pray for the, the schools, the, uh, the young people. As they go back, they, many have already gone back. Some are about to go back. Uh, Lord, we, we pray for their safety. We pray for the teacher safety and administrators. And <clears throat> so sad to hear about um, John Harper, former administrator, um, principal over at Hebron, uh, passing away. We're, we know he's rejoicing with you, but you know, for those who are at home back here, it's so got to be so difficult. Family, friends, just. Shocked, so shocking. Lord, we uh, ask you to be with our nation. Bring back a level of normalcy, protection, wisdom. Our national leaders, the election that is coming up. We pray that leaders who will be most biblical in their being leaders will be elected. 
I know you can bring about whatever needs to happen. I pray that you would have mercy on this nation, not that we deserve it, but Lord, we need it, and we ask you for it. Lord, please accept our worship as we sing praises to you this morning. In Jesus' holy name, amen. So, time to sing. All right. If anyone wants, if anyone wants to grab a rhythm instrument, I did disinfect them, and they are back there in that little blue box in front of Roger on the next to last few. So I want to grab a, a rhythm instrument to sing along and to make noise and sort some noise into the Lord. <laughs> so you're welcome. Oh, there goes Mason. Mason can make a noise.
sheets gathered <laughs> and scattered all over the place here. While I'm doing that, you could turn to Ezekiel chapter 6. Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel. 
I've been reading through Ezekiel, and uh, I was amazed at some of the things, one in particular, that I discovered while I was reading through that I hadn't noticed before. And that is that over and over again, Ezekiel says this phrase, basically, Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I'm reading uh, just a few of the verses that use this phrase in chapter 6 uh, of Ezekiel, verse 13. It starts right out, Then you shall know that I am the Lord when their stain are among their idols, when their slain are among their idols, all around their altars, on every high hill, on the mountain tops, and under every green tree, and under every thick oak, wherever they offered sweet incense to all their idols. So I will stretch out my hand against them and make the land desolate. Yes, more desolate than the wilderness toward Dibla, in all their dwelling places. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Next chapter, verse 4. My eye will not spare you, nor will I have pity, but I will repay your ways and your abominations will be in your midst. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 9, my eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. I will repay according to your ways, and your abominations will be in your midst. Then you shall know that I am the Lord who strikes. <clears throat> now, it seems as though the Lord wants us to know that he is the Lord. That he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. That he is the boss. That he is the creator. That he is the Lord. He's God. He's the one who made you. He definitely wants us to know that. And Ezekiel actually repeats that phrase 50 times in this book. He wants us to know. He wants everybody to know that he's the Lord. Because he is the Lord. <clears throat> now you will know one of these days. But will it be knowing him as the Lord as your friend or will it be knowing him as the Lord who has defeated your wicked and stubborn rebellion will you know him as your friend or will you know him as your foe but you will know who he is Ezekiel reveals God's efforts to convince man that he is the Lord as I say 50 times in this book then you shall know that I am the Lord. You say, surely everyone knows that God is the Lord. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says that since the creation of the world is invisible, attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because they can see that God is the creator, God is the maker, God is the Lord. It's all around us, everywhere we look. And yet the truth is that many choose not to believe, choose not to know, choose not to know that he is the Lord. Verse 21 of Romans 1 there, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And even as they did not like to retain God in their not, You know, when we're going our own way, and we're doing our own thing, and we're doing things we know God doesn't want us to do, we don't like to think about God. We don't like to retain Him in our knowledge. We don't like to know that He is the Lord. We'd rather just tuck Him away someplace. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a debased mind. There was a judgment. God just says, okay, go ahead, do your thing. To do those things which are not fitting. Most people choose not to know. Praise God that some still seek. And if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be opened. It's amazing that today we're hearing about Muslims Islamic, in Islamic countries 
people who are not allowed to have Bibles or anything of that nature, actually having dreams and visions of Jesus Christ coming to them and telling them to go to a certain place and go to a certain person, and when they go there, they hear the gospel from that person, and they receive him. I believe that there is light in creation all around us that tells us that there's a God, and he's all-powerful, and he's all-loving. But it doesn't give us enough information to be saved from our sins. But I believe if anybody has that light of creation and responds to it, that God will give them opportunity to hear the gospel. And as with those uh, dear Islamic folks, in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40, you remember <clears throat> one of the first deacons, Philip, was sent by God to speak to an Ethiopian eunuch who was in his chariot, headed back to Ethiopia, and this Ethiopian was a seeker, and he was reading Isaiah's prophecy, and he didn't understand, talking about Jesus, talking about the Messiah. And Philip came alongside, got up into the chariot with him, and preached the gospel to him. And the Ethiopian eunuch received Jesus and was baptized. It was a situation where God set up a divine appointment where this person had the opportunity. The reason most people don't come to Christ is not because they could not come, would not have opportunity. The reason is because they don't want to. The reason is because they choose not to retain God in their knowledge. What if you, if you have children, one day, you may have children if you don't have them now. What, what if your child absolutely refused to accept that you were their parent? What if, what if they rejected you as their parent? <clears throat> what if they refused to know you as their mother or their father? How would that make you feel? Um, a guy I know has three sons, one stepdaughter, had a lovely wife, made a horrible choice to do some immoral things with stepdaughter. And as a result, he's divorced, he's spending four years in prison, and it's very possible that his sons will never look at him know him in the same way as their father, as they did before. He hopes for the best. You say he deserves it. Okay. Yes, he did. But God gets treated like that. People refuse to accept him, to know that he is the Lord. And he has never, never done anything bad to them. They brought it all on themselves. Mankind has brought it on, on themselves. The whole thing of sickness and death and the whole bit is because man sinned against God and a curse came about as a result and that's why they go through all the things that's why we go through all the things we go through. <clears throat> this world is sometimes very beautiful but it's filled with lots of things that are very irritating <clears throat> and very ugly and very painful. But God, it's not God's fault. Loving, long-suffering, self-sacrificial creator. But yet he be, is, is treated like dirt by most human beings. Just like, I don't need him. I'm in charge here. I'm going to do what I want to do. He created you. He sustains your very life. And yet... Then you shall know that I am the Lord. God has gone to great lengths to show us that he's the Lord. He's the creator, the sustainer. He became a man. He died on the cross. He rose again. He ascended for us. He is our mediator. 
between God the Father and us. He is our advocate, our intercessor. He prays for us. He advocates for us. He stands in place for us. He is coming again that we might be resurrected and received unto him, that where he is, we may be also. He's done all that. And he says he's going to prepare a place for us, <clears throat> a new heaven, new earth, for those who choose to know him as Lord, to spend eternity with him. He's gone to great lengths, lovingly, to reach us. But mostly to no avail. You realize that in the United States, um, back in 2009, which wasn't that terribly long ago, 11 years, about a decade ago, 17% of the people in America said that they were atheists, agnostics, or nothing. That's 17% in 2009. Now, 26% say they're atheists, agnostics, or nothing. In 2009, 51% of the population identified themselves <coughs> as non-Catholic or Protestant Christians. Now today, not 51%, but only 43% identify themselves that way. <coughs> People are just walking away from God. They're turning their backs. They refuse to know him as the Lord, have respect and reverence for him as the Lord. He hasn't changed. I'm thankful throughout the world it's not like that. Throughout the world, many are coming to Christ. Massive, massive groups of people in China coming to Christ. Massive groups of people in Brazil coming to Christ. But the United States, unfortunately, not so. We have turned our backs as a nation on him, I'm afraid. <clears throat> Disobedient, idolatrous, unfaithful. In the, in the end, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. <clears throat> They'll either bow as his beloved friend or as his defeated foe. But they'll bow because he is Lord. When he comes back, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 6 through 10, when he comes back, it's going to be a thing where those who know him as Lord will be at peace, at rest, excited, thrilled to see their Lord coming. But all the rest will be rightfully scared to death because he's coming with his mighty angels in flaming fire to bring vengeance upon those who do not know God, who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. In the end. But you know, God prefers using love, not wrath, to convince us that he is the Lord. He'd rather love us into the kingdom than to wrath us into the kingdom. <clears throat> but sometimes the only thing that will get our attention is the wrath part. And his ultimate purpose, of course, is to get us into the kingdom. Romans 2.4 or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? He wants the goodness to be responded to. But then next verse, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. He doesn't want it to go that way. But like I say, most need some wrath to get their attention. <clears throat> Bonnie's mother used to say about her brother Matt, I've got to spank him once to get his attention, and then I'm going to spank him about whatever it was that he needed to spank him for. It's kind of like God has to spank us once to get our attention, 
and then he can deal with us about whatever it is that he wanted to deal with us about. And so, in this book of Ezekiel, we see God telling them, then you'll know that I'm the Lord when there's death, when there's desolation, when people get what they deserve without pity, when people are scattered, when there's famine, when there's COVID-19, oh, pestilence, pandemic. <laughs> when there's false prophets are, that are cut off, when the walls of the city are broken down. We've seen some walls of cities broken down recently. People given uh, as fuel for the fire. Judgments, vengeance, anger, and fury. When the, when the children of Israel were going into the promised land and they were fighting against the Canaanites, <clears throat> there was a, a Canaanite king named Adonai Bezek. <clears throat> Adonai Bezek was fighting, uh, of course. He lost, and, uh, and they captured him. He ran. They captured him. And uh, this is what he said. He said, 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off used to gather scraps under my table. <clears throat> they cut off his thumbs and big toes. And he said, as I have done, so God has repaid me. There's a principle. You reap what you sow. The only way to get out of that principle is <clears throat> for God and his mercy because you respond to his love and mercy to get you out of it. <clears throat> we want to put everything under the blood. We don't want to have to get what we deserve because what we deserve is not going to be good. He wants to reach us by love. He prefers that we know him by love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The most famous verse in the entire Bible and it's about the fact that he loves us so much that he provided this way that is the only way to get us out of the mess we're in and yet most people won't have anything to do with it. Israel. He speaks to Israel throughout this book, and he talks to them over and over again about, you know, you're going to have desolation, you're going to be killed with a sword, my eye will not spare, nor will I have pity, I will repay you according to your ways, and your abominations will be in your midst. Then you'll know that I'm the Lord. That'll wake you up, hopefully. But this is what God wants for Israel. It says in, in uh, chapter 16, beginning with verse 60, Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Verse 62, And I will establish my covenant with you, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I'll establish promises with you, that you may remember and be ashamed, and never open your mouth any more because of your shame. When I provide you an atonement payment for all that you've done says the Lord God. Of course he was going to provide Jesus Christ as the payment and he did provide that payment. In chapter 20 verse 41 I will accept you as a sweet aroma when I bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you've been scattered. He scattered them in his wrath but he says I'm bringing you back and I will be hallowed in, in you before the Gentiles. What's he say next? Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I bring you into the land of Israel, into the country which I raised my hand in an oath to give to your fathers. And there you shall remember your ways and all your doings with which you were defiled. And you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight because of the evils that you have committed. Well, then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have dealt with you for my name's sake not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O house of Israel, says the Lord God. And there shall no longer be pricking briar or painful thorn for the house of Israel from among all those who are around them, who despise them. 
then they shall know that I am the Lord. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Listen to this one in Ezekiel 37, verse 13. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord who have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. He wants us. He wants Israel, and he wants everyone. The promises to Israel are also to the rest of the world because those that are blessed, bless Israel, will be blessed, and they will be a blessing to all the rest of the nations. And we are those people. God wants us to respond to him in repentance and feel really bad. He's describing the Israelites feeling really bad about not responding to him, about not seeing him, knowing him as their Lord. They're feeling mournful. They're feeling broken. They're feeling sorrowful because of what they have done, of their rebellion, of their doing their own thing, of their ignoring of him. That's called repentance. That's called changing your mind. That's called, called having a broken heart. And, and, and that's what we don't see too much of anymore. People just looking at their life and saying, Oh God, what have I done? What am I doing? I don't like myself. I don't like what I've become. But God loves me. And I'm going to acknowledge Him as Lord. And I'm going to give my life to Him. <clears throat> and He comes into your heart. His Spirit comes in. There's a new you. There's a new attitude. There's a new way. There's a new direction. <clears throat> and if you live for Him, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's what this is all about. We don't see much of it. Abu Atala wrote from Cairo to Christ. This guy was a, a Muslim. And they took him, somebody took him to a Christian prayer meeting. And at this Christian prayer meeting, he noticed that the women and the men were talking about each other and treating each other like brothers and sisters. And he noticed that that wasn't anything like what he'd seen on the soap operas of America. And he was surprised. And then he, he heard this person pray thanking God for helping him with his homework. And he thought, how foolish. The God of the universe couldn't be interested in this guy's homework. He said, Allah, the God of the Muslims, said he is, he is just demanding and violent and judge, and that's it. He said, the God of Christianity loves and calls on his people to love him. As a result of this, Atala became a Christian and has shared the gospel with Muslims all over the Muslim world. Because he realized there's wrath, but there's love, which he had never known before. I was reading about uh, an individual named Francis S. Collins. He's a medical doctor and a Ph.D., most of us could never be either one of those things. <clears throat> Even Bonnie isn't both. <laughs> He's the director of the Human Genome Project. Scientists, leading scientists to read 3.1 billion letters of the human genome. This guy was an atheist. But in medical school, 
He was confronted, encountering life and death issues at the bedside of his patients. He was often challenged with the question, what do you believe, doctor? And he began to search, and his search led to faith in Jesus Christ. As a believer, Dr. Collins said, he sees DNA as the information of all living things, as God's language and the elegance and complexity of our own bodies and the rest of nature as a reflection of God's plan. I tell you, we've been lied to a great deal. We've been turned away from God. But God says, you're going to know that I am the Lord. Which will it be? As friend or foe? Would you bow your heads with me? We're going to know one way or the other. We haven't been having invitations where you come forward, but if anybody was really desirous of coming to Christ, we could forgo that. We're going to sing an invitation hymn, either in your seat, or if you really want to, come on down anyway. We don't care. We love you. God loves you. Wants you to come to Him. Wants you to know Him. And so we're going to sing softly and tenderly. That's how the Lord wants it, softly and tenderly. somebody today, Christian person and they'll be glad to talk to you, I'll be glad to share scripture with you, glad to pray with you and uh, make sure that when the time comes and Jesus is separating the sheep from the goats that you're on his right hand not on his left hand that you're among the sheep instead of among the goats Okay, uh, <clears throat> birthdays this week. Heather had a birthday. <clears throat> and she's young, believe me. She's 31 years younger than me, so I told her that. Does that make you feel any better? Oh, good. 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 <clears throat> Tell you, Peyton, Jen, Preston, I know the rest of the family. Thrilled to have that girl Amen. with us Amen. and uh, healthy and getting good reports. And Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. Uh, time goes by. <laughs> when you've had too many birthdays. I'm just trying to get after I was warm. <laughs> <laughs> so we got two in the same family going on here. <clears throat> we also had an anniversary. Will and Whitney were this week. So that's still the same family. What's going on? <clears throat> Everything happens this time of year. This month. I will say this about Heather. She was actually here, I think it was last week, she was here like early. Her car's out there. I had to go see if she passed out in the car or something. <laughs> but, but fortunately, she's back to her old self today. So it's, it was their fault. I'm sure it was. I'm, I'm sure it was. I don't have any doubt. <laughs> Give her a hard time. <clears throat> okay, Bill and Heather and Will and Whitney, and we better sing to these people. Anybody else that we've missed? Okay, here we go. Happy This evening, 5 p.m., our John Bible study. And you can sneak in there anytime. Each chapter is good to look at by itself, as well as together. Uh, Start a new chapter today. Start a new chapter today. 16. Um, 6 p.m. Wednesday prayer meeting. Now, uh, <coughs> Prayer needs, uh, as I mentioned in my prayer, John Harper, former uh, Hebron principal, uh, had a heart attack and passed away. I believe he was in his 50s. And that, that sounds old to young people, but that's not old. <laughs> <clears throat> so pray for his family. Um, you know, you, you've seen this happen here and there, where it's usually a guy just uh, 40s or 50s, suddenly, and it's so shocking for the family, and, uh, you know, it just, just seems like the wrong time, but God knows. So pray for uh, his family, pray for um, Coach Vaughn and his family, his wife passed away, I understand, and uh, pray for Madison, Linda's granddaughter, and Justin, um, they've got COVID-19, and so uh, they need your prayers. So they're not having terrible symptoms at this point, and hopefully they will not. Linda said she hadn't been around them lately. <laughs> Everybody pulls away. Um, other prayer needs that have come up that we need to. He had hands after the prayer list. He got a red Friday. He's okay. He's feeling up pretty good. But somebody didn't have a red flight. He took the dishes and said, He's dead. Excellent. Yeah. Love that no break lights thing. <laughs> Who was that? Bill Johnston. Heart attack? No, he's had a long time, but he had had a stroke. They were coming in the nursing home or in the hospital here. Okay. That's not any better, but it's just not as shocking as a sudden heart attack. I know my parents both died of heart attacks, and I was a thousand miles away, and, and you just don't get to. Say your goodbye. It's gone. Yeah. What? That sugar again? I think maybe her stomach just will not wake up. Since her stomach is in. So they're doing some kind of study. So Becky Dendy's back in the hospital. What's, what's her name, Miss Gwen? Vicki Novelli. 
Vicky Novelli. Oh, she married an Italian guy. COVID-19, home of oxygen. It's nasty stuff. <laughs> All right. If, if there are no other uh, fresh prayer needs, let's all stand and be dismissed. Brother Roger, would you dismiss us in prayer this morning?